Hey everybody, welcome to Geeking Out About It. I'm Kayleen. I'm Kaylin, and that's Austin. Has Sam been in there the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I knew he was going on vacation after a, for a little while when he stopped hosting, but I didn't realize that he meant to the Matrix. <laughs> Does he need help? <laughs> um, can, I, can we have somebody checking on that while yeah. we continue? Yeah. We can look into it. Yeah, it's, it's fine. fine. Yeah. It's okay. fine. Well, right. well, well, while someone's looking into that to see if we can get Sam back out of The Matrix, uh, we're actually here to talk about uh, The Matrix mm -hmm. itself, yeah. the, the movie series. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to start up with a quick lineup of characters because mm -hmm. there's the main ones, of course. Yeah. There's a whole so universe the, of them, so you got to know the basics. Mm -hmm. So the main character is Neo, and he essentially is the chosen one, uh, and he... Is kind of like living his ordinary life and everything and then he kind of well we'll talk more about kind of his intro to the matrix but um he's pretty awesome and he does a lot of cool fight scenes and he wears like this cool black trench coat and these cool shades it's pretty awesome and it's so, yeah. keanu reeves so. it's keanu reeves and then his uh i was gonna say female counterpart but more like love interest is trinity um, she shows up as a hacker, or she like meets Neo through hacking in a way, mm -hmm. and um, she's his main love interest, and she's pretty cool. She goes around, she's pretty, I can't say the word, but she's cool. We like her. Does a lot of awesome fight scenes, yeah. wears cool clothes, all that, yeah. Swear words. Swear <laughs> words. Uh, then we should go on to Agent Smith, who is the main antagonist in the first, second, and third Matrix movies. Uh, he is a policing program for the Matrix, whose job it is to find uh, basically humans who have been awakened to the reality of their situation and uh, put them back in their place where they belong. And uh, he ends up getting sort of destroyed by Neo in the first one when he awakens to his powers, but actually Neo just ends up severing his connection to Matrix command and control, so he becomes a rogue program and ends up being able to duplicate himself and take over the entire Matrix and basically wipe everybody out. But we'll get into all of that when we're talking about the summaries for the actual movies. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about it later. Mm -hmm. Another cool character is the Architect. He shows up in the second movie and third movie, uh, but he's basically a program that helped create the Matrix, and then he's mm -hmm. in charge of recreating it every time it reboots. So, like, not the creator, but definitely someone who's created the matrix mm -hmm. one he might be another. the creator we don't really know it's yeah. just yeah, sort of implied be. that he is it's kind of up in the air yeah and he's very powerful like like the most powerful program essentially yeah. he might be the most powerful might program. be the most <laughs> um and then that takes us to the oracle who uh she shows up and like she kind of she we're kind of like calling her probably like the second most powerful yeah. program essentially possibly. maybe possibly <laughs> And she kind of, kind of like her power, you could say, or like program, is that she can kind of like see the future in a way, but she, she's, she's very powerful and she kind of helps Neo a little bit throughout the movies in a way, but Helping yeah. Figure out who he is. Yeah. yeah. Well, that leads us on to uh, her favorite student and the, not the chief defender of Zion, but certainly its strongest believer, uh, Morpheus. He is yes. Neo's mentor figure. He teaches him all about the Matrix and uh, how to take on his role as the One. Um, mm -hmm. He is a strong believer in the prophecy of the One as it pertains to rescuing humanity in the Matrix. Mm -hmm. And he believes that the Oracle uh, it intends to help humanity by bringing, on the, actual, bringing the One to them. Um, mm -hmm. Morpheus knows from the Oracle that it is his destiny to find the One he doesn't exactly know what that implies. Uh, he does go on to the next two movies to continue to believe in that prophecy and be a strong proponent of Neo's humanity rather than his programness, because Neo is sort of operates kind of like a program, but he's actually mm -hmm. a person mm -hmm. anyway. Um, and he actually is the one who first brings Neo out of the Matrix in the first place. Uh, he does this by offering him a choice. He offers them the ability to stay in the Matrix and have no knowledge of the outside world and the reality of his situation, which is admittedly fairly bleak, or he offers them the choice to come into reality and embrace his position as the chosen one and savior of mankind, admittedly having to go through a lot of suffering to do it. And he offers them that choice in the, in the form of a red pill or a blue pill. So we'd have thought it would be really fun 
<laughs> to take a, take some of those questions as what what would you rather do uh, and yeah. bring yeah. them to the people of Oregon State. So we went out onto the street with a camera and we asked them a couple of questions in the form of red pill or blue pill. Uh, don't worry, no pills were actually <laughs> exchanged in any of these dealings. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope you enjoy the video. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, so what is your name? My name's Grace. Nice to meet you, Grace. So have you ever seen The Matrix? I have seen The Matrix. Nice. Would you say you're a fan, maybe? <laughs> I'm a fan of The Matrix. I watch it with my dad, so we, we both enjoy, I don't know, the, it's like a mind bender, so we do mm -hmm. like it. <laughs> do you know anything about The Matrix? A little bit. I've seen it like a few years ago, most recently. That's perfect. That's all you really need. Are you like a fan of it, or is it just OK? Uh, more kind of fan, yes. I've watched it a couple times, repeatedly. So yeah, you can say I'm a fan. Nice. Um, so if you had the choice, would you uh, choose to be in the world of the Matrix, mm -hmm. or would you like no? <laughs> I would. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I would. Uh, yeah, I would say yes. <laughs> I have I'm, I have a very enthusiasm to that. Okay, if I'm in danger, then I'm in danger. If I, I don't say if I die, I wish not to die. But yeah, I will take the risk. Nice, nice, very cool. I think so, yes. I would like to be able to probably see the world for what it really is and kind of get to a better knowledge of what existence really be like and stuff like that. I think that's pretty sick. I'd prefer not to be in the Matrix, personally. <laughs> um, yeah. I like knowing what's going on and mm -hmm. the idea of not knowing what's actually going on is a little bit scary. Mm -hmm. I'd prefer not to be in the world of the Matrix. <laughs> totally, I agree. Okay. I feel like I would get bored of it quickly, right? Because it's, it's fun at first, like, messing around and, and just doing whatever you want because you can control whatever crazy dream you're in. But then eventually I'd be like, well, reality was nice. Not being in fully in control of reality was kind of nice. Yeah, that's fair. So since you know about the Matrix, uh, you're probably familiar with the red pill, blue pill concept, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to ask you a couple like red pill, blue pill questions. Uh, the first one, would you rather, um, not would you rather, <laughs> uh, red pill watching the B movie on loop for 24 hours. Hey. Blue pill watching every episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians in order. Definitely the, definitely the B, B movie. B movie? B, B movie's great. So would you rather take the red pill and everything tastes like your favorite food or take the blue pill and everything is in your favorite color? No, take the red pill. I want everything to taste like my favorite mm -hmm. food. I think uh, red pill. I love food, but like, you know, if it's all tasting the best, then, you know, can't complain with that. That's true. That's true. Red pill, uh, you get safe and stable Wi-Fi wherever you go. Blue pill, you always have a full battery on your devices. Um, I'll take the free Wi-Fi, actually. All right, all right. I think I'll go with the Wi-Fi thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if I want to use my phone, I want to have a Wi-Fi. There's no point to have it charged and I can't have a Wi-Fi. I'm not going to use it. Mm -hmm. Call somebody, that's in the old days. <laughs> <laughs> nice, okay. Full battery on all my devices. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, red pill, always wear wet socks. Blue pill, always have chapped lips. Blue, I hate wet socks. It's, it's, it's a nightmare. <laughs> it's a nightmare? Yeah. Oh, wet socks. <laughs> I would keep my, my legs, but yeah. Wow, okay, okay. Red pill, uh, would you be, you'd be in the world of Harry Potter, but have no powers. Or blue pill, you'd be in the real world with powers. Real world with powers. All right. Absolutely. It sounds better. Ooh. Real world with powers, I would say. <laughs> I agree. Nice. Red pill, a full Lord of the Rings marathon, including the Hobbit and the eight and eight Hobbit meals. Blue pill, a full Star Wars marathon, including the sequel trilogy and Star Wars themed drinks. You know, I've I've never seen the Lord of the Rings trilogy all the way through, so I'd I'd go with that one. All right, all right. Red pill, you never have to sleep again. Blue pill, you never have to eat again. I think uh, red pill, I love food a lot, so I think I'd rather just be able to taste everything, eat everything. That's fair. Would you rather have, like, take the red pill and your food is always warm, or take the blue pill and your food is always cold? Red pill. I like soup too much to have cold soup. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay. Um, red pill, always wear expensive clothing but smell bad. Blue pill, wear cheap clothing, but smell great. Blue, I, I think smell is very important. Um, so I definitely have to go with that one. Awesome. So would you rather take the red pill, 
and um, your life now has theme music composed by John Williams, which is always played and has appropriate tone for what is happening around you. Or take the blue pill and your life now has narration voiced by Morgan Freeman, which only you can hear and is omnipresent. <laughs> That's a funny one. No. I would say the Morgan Freeman. He has a very thick and nice one, voice. Yeah, I would say, yeah. The Morgan Freeman thing. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I'm with you, man. <laughs> awesome. Thank you yeah, very thank much. You. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. yeah. All right. I have breaking news. We have received the dad joke of the day by my own father. Shout out Charlie. Are you ready? Okay. Old bicycles should not be thrown away. They should be recycled. Whoa. Oh, just kidding. We had a super fun time filming that package on the street. It was so mm -hmm. cool getting to talk to people on campus and get their opinions on the Matrix. Mm -hmm. um, but we didn't get to ask each other those questions. Yes. So we have another fun little game. This is one <laughs> of my new favorite things to do. Yeah. Um, so we're going to ask each other a red pill, blue pill questions, and we're mm -hmm. going to kind of talk about those. Nice. Uh, I'm going to start. Mine is, uh, would you rather, or not would you rather, <laughs> red pill. <laughs> You get to eat your favorite food every day for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Blue pill, you have to, you can eat whatever you want, but once a month, you have to eat your least favorite meal. Mm. All right, so I knew this was happening before, before we did this segment because, you know, obviously I was told generally what we were doing. Uh, but I don't know how to respond necessarily to that question because I don't know what my least favorite food is. Um, mm. I don't like kimchi, but is it my least favorite food? I don't know. I, that, also, unpopular opinion probably for a lot of people. I'm betting the control room is currently booing, but I, I don't know if that's actually my least favorite food. So I don't know how to answer what would be my least favorite food. However, I do think, based on the options, I would rather take eat whatever I want and then have to eat my least favorite food once a month because, mm -hmm. honestly, I have a, a bad meal at least once a month anyway. Uh, but I do like yeah. to have the option to get, you know, at least some semi-rounded nutrition. Mm -hmm. I get that I'm overweight right now anyway, but I would prefer to not be even more overweight by eating something like pizza every day, every yeah. meal forever. Because that'd mm. probably be my favorite food, right? Whose favorite food isn't pizza? Uh, right. <laughs> I'd probably, yeah, pick like eat whatever I want and then just suffer the consequences <laughs> once a month. The con I do yeah. eat whatever I want and suffer the consequences. I need to get on a diet or something. Uh, it's I've an, got it's plans just, for that. It's yes. like, yeah, it's like, yeah, I would want to eat. A, a better question would be, would you rather eat your favorite food or like never be able to eat it again? Yeah, that'd probably be more intense, but, but that's what would, diets are, right? <laughs> that's true. Yeah. In one way or another. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll go ahead and ask you Alrighty. a question. Okay. So, would you rather so take the red pill and be in the world of Harry Potter but have no powers, or take the blue pill and be in the real world but have powers? I really like this question. <laughs> um, I, I think this one's really easy, but you know that's just me. I would do real world powers because then I, th you'd basically be a, like a superhero at that point. Mm -hmm. And yeah. plus, I I've, I've been wanting wizard powers forever. Like, yeah. <laughs> plus, yeah. all right, you know what? Quick sidebar into Harry Potter world. If you've seen the way that muggles are treated in the Harry Potter universe, I don't want to live there as some random muggle who has no powers. Even if I was a squib and could see magic happening around me, you have no rights in that world, okay? They just walk in, destroy the place, magic Hitler blows up your space. I don't know what you want. You, have you seen the Fantastic Beast stuff? Don't be a muggle in the Harry Potter universe. It sucks. <laughs> Simply. Okay, my turn though. I, I, have one, I have one that I wanted to ask. And this did make it into the package at least once, but I, I wanted to see what your guys' take on it is. So, watch the B movie <laughs> for 24 hours straight. No sleep, no breaks. Mm -hmm. Or watch every episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians in order. But you do get to live your life as normal. It's just that any time you're consuming media, it's that. It's such a tough question because I really do love the B movie. <laughs> and I think I could watch it on repeat. I think I could do 24 it. 24 like, hours. I, yeah, for 20, I think I could. I, I have it memorized anyways, so it's oh, practically on repeat okay, in my head nice. no matter what. But, nice. but do I want to suffer through the Kardashians? I mean. <laughs> That's a hard question. There's, to, to give extra context, there are 167 hours of keeping up with the Kardashians. Yeah. 
It would take you I, some I time. I would do the B movie, 24 hours, get it done with, way less hours spent. <laughs> yeah, just freedom exactly. back. <laughs> exactly, I would just yeah, live like my a, life. Yeah. Your day, day in B movie jail. Yeah, yeah, basically, it's just one day, one day. You can do that. All right, well, there's our answers. And they really are would you rather questions anyway. It's just that the red pill, blue pill format's kind of funny. There's memes mm -hmm. about it. That you, I'm sure you saw some of the graphics, it's fun. It's uh, but uh, we do have to take a quick break because I'm being signaled to. And uh, when we come back, we're going to be talking a little bit more about what the actual movies entail for The Matrix, giving you some quick summaries and some discussion on what they are. So, mm -hmm. see you soon. <laughs> Hey, yeah, <laughs> welcome back from the break. So uh, the very first movie is The Matrix, and it came out in 1999. And it was a very revolutionary movie at the time because, like, how it was made, the creators, they explored, I mean, everything possibly that you could explore with making a movie with, you know, the actual storyline and then the, like, special effects and everything. It was pretty crazy. And um, like they added a lot of CGI, but also I think what's really cool about the movie is that they, like the set itself is real. Like some of the places that you're seeing and like the effects and everything, all of that is real. Like they built these massive walls and you know, these giant, you know, like slide like tube things for Keanu Reeves or like Neo to slide through. And I think that's what's like what, kind of makes the movie like super cool is that you can actually like watch it and like what you're watching yeah, is very real. It makes real. you double, like not double think, uh, but like yeah. second guess like what's real. Yeah. Because some of it is. No, I, I can talk about the special effects and uh, the original Matrix and actually the, the sequels as well mm -hmm. for, for quite some time. But we should yeah. probably remind the audience exactly what happened mm -hmm. in the Matrix because oh, yes. I know that most of us don't spend our weekends watching it. <laughs> yeah, so like besides all like the lots of like wire, you know, fighting and like action scenes and everything. Um, basically, so Neo is, um, he's like a computer programmer, essentially, and he's just kind of living his like ordinary Mr. life. Mr. Anderson. Mr. An yes, Thomas Anderson. And uh, he essentially, like I can't remember exactly the initial like time that he meets Morpheus uh, but he, he gets like, kind Trini of like Trinity this. like finds him and then yeah he follows like, the white rabbit basically yeah he's told he follow the white rabbit when he's making some yes. jailbroken programs on for some his people computer on floppy disks yes <laughs> of course. exactly and um and then he eventually meets Morpheus yeah. I believe and then um well he gets kind of hit with like this whole matrix scene and then that's where the red pill and blue pill come along and of course, Neo, he decides to essentially exit the real world and go into the Matrix. And uh, other way around, other er, way around. Exit the Matrix into, oh, the, into the real, real, yes. real world. Yeah. The real world, yes. Um, you can help like elaborate too. Like, oh yeah, yeah. that's what I'm doing. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and then um, I'm like trying to even remember like, they go yeah, like, no, he goes and then he the, like he wakes up in his like little egg incubator thing, that the batteries and the yeah. aliens and the things, yeah. and then Morpheus finds him there, and then they have to like rehab him a bit because he was mm -hmm. in a. It was being used as a human battery for yeah. quite some time, so that does <laughs> mm -hmm. kind of take a little bit of drain out of your muscles. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, he gets rescued by the crew of the Nebuchadnezzar, which includes yeah. Morpheus and Trinity and a few other characters who we didn't actually have time to talk about, but uh, mm -hmm. my favorite Cipher. And uh, they go on to try and, they're not really trying to save like, humanity yeah. so much as they're trying to rescue what parts they can and protect what they have. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, they do this by trying to teach Neo how to become the one because Morpheus mm -hmm. strongly believes mm -hmm. that he is. Then, um, Trinity's not yeah. so much easily convinced, but mm, you know, mm -hmm. Morpheus overrules her because mm -hmm. he is the captain of the Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then Neo has to like train and he like gets like he basically learns all these like programs. yeah he learns all these programs he learns kung fu. and he learns yeah. kung fu which is like super I absolutely it's one of those iconic scene. fight scenes that 
Mm -hmm. probably even if you don't know the matrix you've at least probably seen a mm -hmm. clip of it one way or another i feel like exactly yeah it's a, it's a super classic chosen one story uh this mm -hmm. guy doesn't want to be the chosen one he's like he's reluctant to accept his role mm -hmm. and then the, he gets taught a couple of things and then has to embrace it in the end because mm -hmm. his, well in the slight alteration because his mentor is captured and he wants to rescue morpheus because mm -hmm. morpheus does get abducted by the agents and uh, then neo and trinity yeah. have to do a really awesome tower battle sequence to get up to Morpheus and rescue him with a uh, minigun laden helicopter, which is yes. super cool. Um, but yeah, it, it mm -hmm. forces Neo to embrace himself as the one doing bullet time and dodging and getting into a battle right. with Agent Smith where he learns that he can control the source code of the Matrix, mm -hmm. yeah. which brings us into the amazing special effects that they did mm -hmm. with the original Matrix movie, particularly yeah. the practical effects. Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit about CGI, but CGI wasn't really that good in 1999. Yeah. Um, However, they managed to create CGI for it, but also do other cool camera tricks and everything, such as the bullet time scene. The best where camera trick. The, the, the best of done. all time. The, the best, and <laughs> it's iconic. And um, this like, camera trick actually required over 120 still cameras and two film cameras, which were arranged in a circle, essentially, very close to each other. And it basically took like shot by shot and then, you know, in the editing they had to like put it all together. But you can basically see Neo up in the like air and you get like a full 360 visual of him just like, like still the in the air. Doing like, thing. Yeah, yeah, if you've ever seen the, how it's dodging, made for the yeah. Matrix, he just falls over. Like in, he, in real time, poof, falls yeah. down. That's what mm. they did. You and then they see had, the bullets like oh, so fly good. by and it's super cool. It, it's, a, it's a really amazing effect, especially considering that it was done with very limited CGI. Mm -hmm. In the 90s. Yeah, in the <laughs> 90s, in 99. Mm -hmm. uh, which actually uh, probably has a lot to do with why this such a computer heavy movie was able to be made because it was 1999 and everyone's worried about Y2K. But that's a sidebar. <laughs> we should probably talk about the second Matrix movie. Yes. Uh, the Matrix Reloaded, which came mm -hmm. out four years later in 2003. Mm -hmm. um, it's frankly it's not as good uh, but yeah. what it does do is it, it, it becomes a little bit more of a world dive into the matrix rather than the chosen one story uh, even though it does continue the story with neo it starts to get a little bit less focused on him and starts to introduce a little bit more about how the matrix operates uh, mm -hmm. it definitely brings in the concept of the programs um, the Oracle was one, as it turns out, but that's not really super heavily covered in the first one. It is in the second mm -hmm. one. Uh, these programs are computers that live in the Matrix. They're artificial intelligence, and they have unbridled power as far as living in this animated, uh, animated in this it's, simulated world yeah. that they live in. Uh, it only gets animated later in the Animatrix. Don't worry about that. We'll talk about uh, <laughs> But anyway, it introduces the programs and uh, it introduces the concept of Zion a little bit more. Mm. Uh, it's alluded to in the first movie, but we do get to see Zion and all of its strange shirtless glory uh, <laughs> in the second Matrix movie. And... Yeah. Zion is currently under threat, is the main plot premise of the second movie. There's an army of Sentinels currently trying to attack Zion, mm -hmm. and Neo and a few of the other uh, effectively Zion military leaders are trying to stop those Sentinels. And to mm -hmm. do so, Neo breaks into the Matrix again and talks to a guy named the Architect, and that mm -hmm. guy says, Hey, the One is a concept we came up with to re resolve the constant crashing problem the Matrix has <laughs> because it has human choices in it. Mm -hmm. And in order to resolve the human choice problem, we uh, destroy the world every so often and mm -hmm. reboot it. And you're the guy who we chose to do that. You get to pick a few people to restart Zion, and we're going to kill the rest. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to restart our battery farm. And we're going to do it but all over again. Yeah. <laughs> Neo says, up yours, and decides not to do that. Instead, to try and go save Trinity. Um, yeah. Which leads to all sorts of cascading failures. Mm -hmm. And then the Sentinels are closing in, and he it manages to shut them down in the real world mm -hmm. uh, using his one powers, which is why I keep putting up quotation marks whenever I say the real world, because it is strongly implied that the real world is not actually a yeah. real world. And that actually gets, that gets talked about a lot more in the third movie, yeah. uh, which I'm just going to jump right into, because the yeah. second and third movies mm -hmm. sort of blend together. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, sorry, I made a mistake earlier. The Matrix Reloaded did not come out in 2003. The Matrix Evolutions came out in 2003. They both came out in 2003. Oh, they did? Yeah, yeah they, they came did. out, it was like July and October. Well, no wonder I'm yeah. confused. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, th it so like yeah, it makes sense that it goes directly in a way. Yeah, they're yeah. Yeah. back to back too, so it was like, it was just one long set of just like, mm -hmm. movie. Extra information. <laughs> but uh, yeah, then the Matrix okay. Revolutions comes around and uh, it, it goes a little bit more continuously. It starts right off where Matrix 2 ended. Mm -hmm. And uh, effectively it just revolves around, revolves around Neo finally taking over his role and effectively restarting the Matrix. He ends up uh, eliminating the entire world yeah. because Agent Smith, who he unchained, has become a plague upon the Matrix and reality mm. and is trying to take over both. Um, he keeps duplicating Neil is himself. blinded in that movie yeah. and is able to see anyway because the source code of the universe is accessible to him. Mm -hmm. Because, once again, it's the real world. He's in a way like become more powerful as well like over time, like yeah. in a sense. So. So, yeah, in any case, that. um, that's how the third one ends that he dies and, uh, the world gets rebooted with the architect and the Oracle saying, we're going to make the new matrix and make the peace last. Yeah. Uh, of course the peace doesn't last forever because the matrix four exists. <laughs> uh, that got made in 2021. It's a very recent uh, creation. Yeah. And, um, yeah, just it's called that. the matrix resurrections. And I'll say very little about it other than the title is entirely appropriate. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is about resurrections. I don't want to ruin it for anybody who hasn't seen it, and we don't really have the time to jump too much into yeah. it anyway, so yeah. we're going to go ahead and go over that and talk about some of the weirder stuff that goes along with The Matrix, some of the extra material, as it yeah. were. Yeah, yeah, the a greater, multi, the greater Matrix verse, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's, they like definitely try to do like their own kind of like, or not their own MCU thing, because that wasn't a thing, but mm -hmm. they definitely saw that they had something to build on with like the matrix because like the first one did amazing mm -hmm. and then they're like we're gonna keep like doing this and then it was like we don't like no one really cared that much you know suffice yeah. to say <laughs> they made a video game it was a movie about video games anyway so they made a video game and of it was course. okay but i think that's actually all the time yeah. we have for tonight's episode so wow. I hope yeah. you enjoyed watching it. Mm -hmm. I hope you enjoyed this whole season of Geeking Out About It. If yeah. you did, check out more of our stuff on YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, Twitter, whatever we got going, TikTok. <laughs> oh my gosh. And uh, check out all the other stuff being made by KBVR TV. Mm -hmm. um, this will be our final episode, all three of us up as hosts. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. But hopefully you'll see more geeking out about sometime in the future. Mm -hmm. I heard that possibly Kayleen will be doing involved in the production. Hey, you never, that. You never know. Anyway, that is all the time we have. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for watching. And mm -hmm. one last time, goodbye. All right, bye. Bye, guys.